Hey everybody, welcome to Creek Week. It's the Creek Week. Creeping the in the creek week. This week. It's the third week of January. Does Alex Ready need a nap in. today? Nap? Yeah. You've you turned 30, everybody. Yeah. So I'm welcome old. to oldness. I'm out of touch. <laughs> yep. You're rapidly <laughs> becoming <laughs> less and less relevant. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but Alex, you know, that's it's it's a in our culture, right? Hitting 30. There wasn't a show way back in the day called 30 something. Yes, 30 something. Right. Oh, and yeah. so that that dates us. Yes. And yes. that whole show was about what it's like to, you know, you've now you've fully arrived into adulthood, yes. right? That whole right. thing. Now you've got kids or yeah. that whole sort of thing. So every culture has their boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, and some like in, back in the ancient days, I mean, you're a 13 year old boy. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're a grown up Part now. Of the community now. You're in that yeah. sort of thing. Some initiation right marked you, and now you're in. Yep. So you're an adult. For women, maybe it was a little different, that sort of thing. But uh, we're in the series called Adulting is Hard, which is just using the phrase that gets kicked around a lot. Yep. So uh, I was just curious as we're going through this, this has been really good. We've talked about decision making, and we've talked about uh, sex and marriage, and how to approach these things in an adult way. I'm curious, generally, do you guys think that a, adulting being hard has always been hard, or is it more difficult in the context we find ourselves in now, modern 21st century? Mm. I have an opinion on that. Well, you this is the time to share it, Rick, because yeah. here we are on the internet yeah, with was, a camera in I, your face it, and a microphone. Well, Please is, don't uh, share your opinion. Adulting is Alex's generation's term. So I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. We, I, we throw that around I a lot. Am, well, we're ta it's interesting because I'm now talking, uh, uh, working through a March series where we'll be talking about these different generations. And I think that there is a difference. It's a felt difference. If it's not a practical, there's a real difference in how hard adulting is. I think it's a felt difference. And uh, I, I blame the boomers and, and the Xers because listen, I, you know, they, they kind of came of age in a stunning era of expansion. The expansion of American hegemony, power, military strength, uh, prosperity. Economic growth. Economic growth. And the busters, even though they're called busters because there's a lot less of them, but they experienced the fall of communism. They experienced uh, the Reagan optimism. So they, they grew up in all that, and I think there was a hubris that went along with it that said, we will fix all the problems. And when they had kids, they just wrapped them in bubble wrap and made tried to make everything safe for them. I'm talking about you now, and saying, and then when, and so being wrapped in bubble wrap, and then, and but then we surrounded you with traumatic events. 9-11, the financial crisis. Divorce. Oh, divorce, like just off the chart. It's like, Hey, Child sexual gonna, abuse. Exactly. We're going to protect you from all the problems. Drugs and they, alcohol. They just kept experiencing violence and media. After <laughs> trauma, after trauma. And then they get kicked into the adulting world. It's like, yeah, I'm going, can I go back to the, the, the childhood that I was promised? Okay, so, safe? so Rick is hitting a diplomatic middle road like Canadians are so good at, which is putting responsibility on the preceding generations, you know, for setting up this context. However, if you were to interpret it less, so what you're saying is, this is what good interviewers yeah. do, <laughs> is it could be interpreted though that, you know, when we use this phrase, you've been wrapped in bubble wrap, you've been protected, and that is the, that's you're the- You're welcome. That's the resultant problem. Yeah. What do you say about that? Yeah, I, I think there's a couple different things. I, I don't really focus so much on the, I don't think me getting a participation trophy has utterly changed my life. Um, I don't think that. You don't think that. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that um, I would be living any different now had I not received that participation right, trophy. Right, right. And I don't think it set me up to not deal with hard things. So the whole idea of like. Do you think it is harder? Um, I do. I do. And that it's, it's relative, right? Because I'm basing it upon what research I've done on, you know, houses, you know, before in my understanding is, you know, you could have um, a two, um, a spouse and so a wife and a husband and a family, two dogs, two cars for under a hundred thousand dollar salary. You yeah. could live like that. Yeah. Uh, and that's just not doable now. And like, right. that's, I think that's where you talk about like the financial. The financial, the financial crisis financial. really, yeah. It, it, it created, if there was a trajectory of sort of inflation and the, you know, the general economic trend was, well, everything's more expensive. But 
you know, wages are keeping up. There's a sense in which that's no longer a fact. Yeah, and then we, you know, talking about like sex and marriage, Yeah. majority of my generation grew up with divorced parents. And it was such an interesting conversation with my wife yesterday because I'm blessed. Like my parents are together. My grandparents, both sets are together. Yeah. So she was like, wow, you only have two sets of grandparents. That's crazy. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's how it should be. That's that's what it should be. And so like to her, she's like, man, I have six, you know? And it's like this crazy idea of, um, so why aren't people my age getting married? Why are they just living together? Why are they, um, why are they, maybe they treat sex poorly. It's because they saw the trauma of divorce or they saw the things that happened and then the financial recession. It's like, why do they not give a lot of stuff away or why? Do they- so, so you're in agreement then, the two are in agreement that your generation, that the millennials got handed, got dealt a deck yeah, that I- makes adulting harder. I would also yeah. got dealt a hand, sorry, that makes adulting harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would also say like, I'm not saying that it wasn't hard for the previous generations because it's relative, right? Like I'm saying it feels harder to us, but I'm not saying that it, it we didn't have anything to do with it being harder. I, I do think right, exactly. And we have some privilege. Yep. We have this instant gratification culture right. where we think we should just get the house. We should just get the, mm-hmm. it's 24 years old. I need to have a mansion. Everything was instant. And it's like, no, you guys had to work hard. Like my parents had to work hard for that. That yeah. wasn't something that was just handed to them, right. but it was doable. So I think there's the, there's a feeling of, of hopelessness when mm. I talk to people in my generation yeah. of like, could I ever get there yep. to a house, to a 401k, to a retirement, whatever. But then there's also the realization that they worked hard to get there too. Like my, our parents didn't just magically inherit a house. At least my parents didn't. Right. They had to work hard to get there. Okay. Last question. Uh, the, um, what about the image that all the things that your generation has to work harder to get yours has his mine, the millennials, uh, the, all the, all the things used to being overlooked. I'm mugging. Okay, I'm mugging in the camera right now. <laughs> One last question, okay. uh, Alex. Yes. Uh, looking back at, at the things that are now more difficult for your generation, yeah, things like navigating relationships, sure. economics, economics. technology, all those things that have been handed to you. Does it ever occur to you that maybe I, I hear this come up every now and again? Maybe all that wasn't great. Maybe it's not such a bad thing that we're, we don't we don't get all that. Maybe there's something new. Mm. In other words, maybe like we talk about it with people coming into recovery. Mm. We're asking that what are we asking them to recover to? Uh, right. So somebody who's homeless yes. is like, yes. hey, we would like to give you a home and a job that you hate, that you have to spend 12 hours a yes. day working at, that you can't meet your bills and you hate your house. That is your anchor, you know, that's yeah. what we, hey, have this. Is there a sense that maybe the things you're being. Yeah. So one of the things that I think is a super big benefit, and I think you'll see it on the TikTok, is uh, a lot of this homesteading yeah. is coming out of this. So like people actually learning how to like work the land and yeah. like, you know, grow their own vegetables, grow their own fruits. Um, kind of, I've, I've heard of people buying cows, going in on a cow together and, and starting to you know go on Uh, it's interesting man it's interest it's forced um forced creativity but what the creativity has done is it brought us back generations right it's like it has brought us back to this natural uh command from god to work the earth to work Mm, the the ground and 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 what's been interesting is to just sit in my small group which is a bunch of millennials and talk about canning supplies or like 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 all of this stuff and it's like um so and it, I'll add multi generational living. Multi generational uh, living. Kick, another kickback. Yeah. Yeah. That, this has been forced on us a little bit for, for economic realities, like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like living on land with your parents and your grandparents. And yeah. Rick, um, what are you? What are your thoughts on that as we wrap this up? Well, I I think that um, yeah, like that that there was a sense in which there's you know like the boomers you know they're known for their work ethic. So you're saying, well, but do we want to be as workaholic as that generation was? So, but then there's probably a, some sort of balance where there's a generation, everything was handed to them and they didn't learn to work ethic. 
And so, or, or as much of one, let's just say. So there's probably somewhere right down the middle of that. that it, would be, it would be our generation, wouldn't it? The Gen X. The, the X are kind of X. We got it. We got it exactly the right. The boomers are that that's what I post-World War II generation. <laughs> sorry, sorry, boomers. That, uh, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> so, what, so what you're saying is we're, we've got it we, right. We apexed, and then it was just downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, that, it's that little chart of the evolution of man. Yes, yes. There's Rick and me, and then it's just downhill. Yeah, it's downhill. <laughs> No, that's not true. Alex no. is trying to run up the yeah, hill, okay. keeps falling. <laughs> so we are, uh, we're in the series, uh, Adulting is Hard, where we're talking about, uh, regardless of what generation you find yourself in, uh, trying to live a, a life that's centered on godly values, yeah. uh, godly principles. Uh, it, it can be a challenge and increasingly so. So join us here Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. or uh, online if you can't make it here. And uh, find an e-group where you can talk about yeah. this. Alex mentioned that. We were yeah. talking about other group discussions uh, that make a vital part of your week. And We do talk about your questions, Dan. We just also talk about canning. Oh, I'm all about the canning, baby. <laughs> yeah. I, will, I will start You're adding. okay with the tangent down add, the homesteading? Love, love the <laughs> okay. food preservation yeah. tangents. Yeah. See you next time. See ya. See ya.